Hi, how are you, my lovely friends? I thought I would pop in for a chat because I imagine that a lot of you are feeling like I'm feeling after hearing the news about Catherine, the Princess of Wales. And I just thought, well, sometimes processing news like that just helps if you sort of do it together. So I thought I would pop in and say good day, and we could have a little chat about everything that's passed. I um. I found out, I think, pretty late because I slept in this morning. For some reason, I couldn't sleep last night and I I didn't check my phone and I didn't check the news, which I'm really glad I didn't because I wouldn't have been able to go back to sleep. But I went back to sleep in the early hours of the morning and I slept in and then I woke up because it's Saturday morning here in Oz, so don't have to work, don't have to go anywhere, so I could sleep in. And um, I woke up to the news and, of course, saw her video. What a brave, loving, dignified woman she is. She really is exemplary. I mean, even in that video, there's no hint of self-pity. It's just this quiet courage and concern for her children mainly, and then straight away concern for everyone else that has sent her, you know, lovely wishes and everything. And then on from that to everyone that's experiencing the same diagnosis. That was the extent of a few minutes message, concern for everybody else. And the only concession she gave to herself was, oh, it's been a pretty tough couple of months. Well, that's the understatement of the year. So, oh, gee, she's impressive, isn't she? She just is. Well, my first reaction upon hearing this was obviously thoughts of her and thoughts of imagine trying to break that sort of news to your children, knowing that your children are going to hear a lot in the media and stuff like that. I mean, at least if you're a private person that is receiving such a, you know, challenging diagnosis, you don't have to contend with that extra layer of public scrutiny and, and the fear that your children may hear something that might worry them and all that sort of thing. So, when she was talking about the kids, I I thought, gee, if I was her, I don't think I would have been able to get through that sentence. I, and I think I could see that she, you know, obviously uh, was, you know, challenged and moved at that point. She was holding it together. It's like any mum, isn't it? You know, you just, your main concern is your kids and more than yourself. And um, I could just see the strain that produced for her. But um, after all those thoughts that I'm sure all of you had, I felt a little bit of anger. Um, I felt quite angry at all the people that had piled on her. And, I'm, you know, I was quite vindictive in my mind, thinking, well, I hope, you know, they feel ashamed and all this sort of thing, very self-righteous. And I thought I went to post something on Twitter because I'm sort of more on Twitter now because I've been, I'm mainly on YouTube, but I do go on Twitter now because a lot of my research for all my standing up for Catherine videos has been sort of, you know, sourced from the sort of public vibe and mood that's been expressed on that little cesspit. But there are lovely people on there that are truly just as lovely as you guys and are just as concerned about Catherine. So I thought, well, if she can be dignified, I need to be dignified in my first statement. So I'll read you what I first uh, wrote because I always feel like I'm sort of representing <laughs> you guys a little bit, So, which is very presumptuous and arrogant of me, but it just I'm conscious of it. So this is what I said. The Princess of Wales has always had my love, trust and appreciation. I wish her that and more as she faces this very difficult challenge, deeply understood by many. And then I just put three hearts and I tagged it Catherine, Catherine the Princess of Wales. So that's what I've pinned to the top of my Twitter page. Um, because I didn't want to mention the dastardly duo, the duplicitous duo, uh, because I just wanted to make it about her. And oh gosh, you should see though, the amount of people that are deleting shameful tweets at a fast rate of knots. <laughs> It's just they're going through their feeds really quickly and there's all sorts of justifications for all the horrible things they've said. And look, surprising, I don't want to drag us down because I'm I'm going to talk about positive things, but the Sussex squad are at it already. They're at it already, equating her diagnosis with that stupid woman, Meghan Markle. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not holding back anymore. And one more negative thing, might as well get the negative things packed into the one area in the video. 
um, I was appalled by the fact that their public statement was put out via Harper's Bazaar. Now that sort of ties in to the PR versus propaganda video I made uh, a few days ago, doesn't it? Because they put it out through an entertainment fashion rag, their official statement. And the official statement, which I won't even bother repeating because it was just woeful, and they called her Kate. They called her Kate. So that filled me with outrage, not so much at the silly woman Meghan Markle, but at the fact that Prince Harry has been trained in all this sort of protocol and what should be said when and how. He's grown up being trained to do the right thing. And you would think at a point of such crisis that he would make an effort to do the right thing. But he couldn't bring himself to. I think he left it in the hands of his word salady wife. So this is what I tweeted about this for what it's worth. Dear Harry and Meghan, it is the Princess of Wales to you. Kate, really, Harry? With all the training you have had, that is your official statement via an entertainment rag. You should be ashamed. And I really believe that. At this point, I don't like saying that to people that they should be ashamed because who am I to judge whether they should be shamed or not? But they, he should be ashamed, really. He's had the training to be able to overcome feelings and at important moments portray dignity, to step up, to do his duty. Whether he's an official working member of the royal family or not, he is a member of the royal family. And he carries the birth title, Prince Harry. So it's about time he started acting like one. Oh, it makes me so mad. And then I wrote, no dignity, no respect even when it really matters. And I tagged it, disgrace, not a prince, shabby. And I really do believe that. I just, I think it articulates all the anger I feel at this moment. So now let's get back to what matters. Let's get back to um, Catherine and the Princess of Wales and the support that we can show her. So I have done a community post. Now, a lot of people are confused how to find the community post. So if you type in the Vintage Read Show in the search bar on YouTube, you will be taken to a page and it'll have my profile picture up on the left-hand side. If you tap on that profile picture, you'll get my main channel page, the Vintage Read Show main channel page. Now, along the top of that channel page, you'll see all these different headings like videos, shorts, playlists. And one of those headings along the top of the main channel page is called community. And if you tick on that, tick on that, click on that community, it will open up the community post. And you'll see the very last community post I posted was a tribute and wishing Catherine, the Princess of Wales, all the best from all of us and inviting you to make your feelings and well wishes and comments known in the comments down below. Now, when it gets up to a few thousand, and I think it's already up there already, I'm going to officially pass this on to the Prince and Princess of Wales via their main office, via email with a link to uh, this community post. I will also screenshot the community post in case, you know, their servers don't accept links as inbound. And I will also tag them on Twitter on their official account and I will also tag them on their official YouTube channel. Now, I know they did see your messages of support um, earlier when we were doing the I Stand With Catherine thing. So it does get through, guys. It does get through this way. You know, it's quite handy, all these modern newfangled tech sort of ways of contacting people because it does get through. They've got dedicated people to actually read uh, things they're mentioned and tagged in and respond when it's appropriate. And um, so be assured that your well wishes will get through. So that's a lovely positive thing that you can do. Now, I'm also going to go through the lovely messages of support, just a few that I read um, today, and because I think they're very heartening and very uplifting and they make you feel really good. 
So I'm just going to find that because I've got it up already. Um, oh, that's right. I took photos. I took photos because it's too hard to link to all this. So, of course, the White House reached out, of course. Um, I found that one a little bit hypocritical because I thought they sort of had a go at her when answering that Photoshop question a week or so ago. Um, so we'll skip over that one. I wasn't that impressed with their behaviour during the pile on. But there was a lovely heartfelt message uh, from Kate's brother. We'll climb this mountain together. The Princess of Wales, brother James, has shared a touching message of support for his sister in a post on Instagram. And in it, he was saying that they'd climbed many mountains together as a family. And, you know, I'm paraphrasing now, but yet again, they will do that again. Uh, which is just absolutely lovely. And he posted a beautiful picture of Catherine and him as young children. Um, and I thought that was just so heart moving, moving and really, really lovely. I also found it really interesting how Kate, Catherine, I nearly said Kate because the headline is Kate. Will they stop it with the Kate? It is so disrespectful. Anyway, it'd be like calling our late majesty Lilibet in headlines. Really? I mean, don't you agree? Don't you agree? Yes. Or if they use for Queen Camilla a nickname that her family uses with her. I mean, it might be very well that her family calls her Kate, but it's not for, anyway, <laughs> off my soapbox. But really, I think they should at the very least call her Catherine. Anyway, so it was recorded by the BBC at Windsor on Wednesday and it was a smooth operation for recording and releasing the video and they said it was particularly important due to the horrendous reaction to the um, edited Mother's Day photo. Now, evidently, they the same production team that actually worked on the King's coronation and the late Queen's funeral were actually asked to come and do this for Catherine. So I think it was great and I think it was very well done and like I said, very dignified, very brave, very loving message. So that was just, you know, a home run and I think we can all be very proud of that. Um, the King and Queen are so proud of courageous Catherine for her courage in speaking as she did. Now that's an official statement from Buckingham Palace. And following their time in hospital together, His Majesty has remained in the closest contact with his beloved daughter-in-law throughout the past weeks, the statement said. So that's lovely. So all the family is rallying around her from the King and the Queen. I thought it was absolutely so moving when Catherine mentioned the stellar support that Prince William had given her throughout this time. I also think it is absolutely heartbreaking that the reason why he didn't attend the memorial service um, was because he got the diagnosis with Catherine that morning of her cancer. And then look at the pylon that ensued from that. Um, just beyond belief, really, isn't it? Beyond belief. I'm, I'm firmly convinced that all of Harry and Meghan's followers are actually insane, really. I am. I wanted to share something else that I posted on Twitter. I didn't expect to share so much on X, on X, sorry. But sometimes my mind <laughs> thinks the best when I have to encapsulate my feelings in a short, you know, few sentences. I think that's actually where I shine when I write. Not to say I'm not sharing this because I'm saying how great I am. I just want to share what I said. Now, it was a while ago and um, it was in relation to that uh, Professor Shola. Is she a professor or she's got a doctorate or something? And um, she's always, you know, coming to the the defence of Megan. And she made the odds, oh, Dr. Shola, right? And she made this ridiculous post in the mid of the Catherine Pylon where she was saying that basically anybody that was getting behind Catherine, like myself, uh, was, you know, a hypocrite because they didn't get behind Megan at the same time when, you know, she was getting a hard time. Although I don't think she ever really did get a hard time like Catherine got, not, certainly not in actual formal media. She may have been trolled online, 
But, you know, Catherine has been trolled online a lot worse than that, I would say. But anyway, I replied and I would like to put this out there because I think it will answer any critics and I think it's, it's true, it's how I feel. And this is what I said because um, she's saying, oh, you know, I've, I've explained. I have always seen Megan as the aggressor, not the vulnerable victim. So I have never felt compelled to protect her but rather protect others from her. So our disagreement does not stem from racism or unconscious bias, but rather a fundamental disagreement on the woman's character. And I stand by that statement. And that is, of course, personal opinion. But that is my answer to the thousands that, you know, try to... Um, shame me or, you know, point out that I'm a hypocrite because I'm standing up for Catherine. That is my formal answer. And I didn't release it via Harper's Bazaar. <laughs> now, I put this book up. This is the beautiful book by, oh, I've never seen it without the dust cover before. Look, it's that gorgeous photo of the then Prince Charles and our late majesty. I've never taken the, the, the cover off. I did that so it would stand better on the bookcase. And this, of course, is from the wonderful Arthur Edwards and it is beautiful book of photography called Behind the News. And I put it up because I wanted to share some of the most, you know, gorgeous photos that he did of Catherine, the Princess of Wales. So I will go back and I will just find the start of their section because there's some beautiful photos Beautiful, beautiful photos. So I'll share them. So that's, I think that is, what is that? That is, oh, Down Under, 2014. I should have known that, shouldn't I? <laughs> Doesn't she look gorgeous in sort of pastel, pastel pink? Then, of course, we have her engagement photo and other action shots because she's an action girl. And the wedding shot as well. So there's just so many gorgeous, 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 gorgeous photos of her, Catherine and Queen Camilla. Back then it would have been the Duchess of Cambridge and the Duchess of Cornwall when that shot was taken. And, oh, gosh, she's gorgeous, isn't she? And lots of tours and the babies. And I love this shot of William in the plane and Catherine looking so proud and sort of of him and, so affectionate. Love that photo. Love that photo. And oh, I just wanted to read out something that Arthur Edwards said after being on tour with them many, many times. Whenever you do a job with them and engage with them, whether it's here or overseas, whether it's fun or serious, both William and Catherine give it their very best. And that pretty much sums them up. Always professional always putting other people first. And I love this shot. Look at this shot. Oh, isn't that lovely? That was taken uh, 2016 on a visit to Bhutan. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge completed a three-hour hike to the Tiger's Nest Buddhist Monastery that is perched on a mountainside at the height of 3,000 metres. Looking casually smart, they scaled the mountain hand in hand. Good-heartedly, Catherine tried her hand at archery and taking penalties on what was a fun tour. So that's that when they've actually made it to the top of the mountain where the monastery was. So I'm sure there will be many, many other fun uh, times and fun photos and lovely family moments. Um, it, the prognosis is very good. Um, that I'm sure they're telling us the truth that um, she's already started treatment. They're feeling very confident about the pro prognosis. She's really looking forward to getting back to work. So, you know, we have every reason to feel really optimistic about everything. Now, I did want to say that I was going to have a premiere tonight for, uh, you know, the book videos. I'm not going to do the premiere. I, ju I just don't feel like sort of doing doing that tonight. Um, so, but I will put the video up 
for all those that are following the books, I will just stick to the same schedule. I'll just put them up and you can, you'll get notifications. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell. That's not a plug for me for the channel. It's a plug for you so that if you're following the book series as you will see when I upload them every Saturday and every Monday. So they'll still be going up and I will do an Easter gossip before bed next week um, on the Wednesday evening as per normal. I'll try and decorate, try and make this a little bit more Eastery up on top of my bookshelf. So I just wanted to give you all my love and say, don't be too sad, be optimistic, be confident. If you want to send a well wish to uh, Catherine, the Princess of Wales and the rest of her lovely family, then please, like I said, visit the community post and add your thoughts in the comments down below. And I promise you, I will responsibly pass them on. Thanks a lot and I'll see you again soon. Bye.